<sighs> All right, guys, I got some stuff. Figured I'd share it. Uh, and I'll go kind of pretty quick because, you know, we'll get to the comic books here in a second. Um, this is an assortment from Goodwills and little bookstores that had sales going on, stuff like that. So, first of all, I found some stuff that I don't know if I put in a video before. I found it in a bag in a corner tied up. I hadn't got it out, so, you know, my, my, I don't think I put them in a video. Anyway, went to a Goodwill on Friday night. Just felt like getting out of the house. Couldn't believe what I found. My jaw dropped, man. I found the sixth book in a, of a, a series of books started in the 60s by Philip Jose Farmer. And this came out in the early 90s. Completes the, uh, the series called More Than Fire of the World of Tear series. Okay? And I'm not going to give a big rundown of what it is. But um, definitely worth checking out. There's six books. Uh, and it's spelled T-I-E-R-S, not tears like crying and stuff. But uh, a great series, Philip Jose Farmer, you can't go wrong. And I just, it, I couldn't believe I found the hardback of this. I mean, I just about fell down. Because a few weeks before this, I went to a bookstore. And I've got all of the books in old, uh, you know, collected hardback prints. But this is a newer edition where they included the sixth book. This is another volume two. And this is the Philip Jose Farmer World of Tears. And, um, you know, and it's got one, two, it's got the last three, and it's got one of the original covers to one of the original paperbacks when they came out. You know, and I think these are by Boris, Boris, uh, Vallejo, I think that's his name. Yeah, we'll just say that's who it is, because he's famous for doing paperbacks. This guy and Frank Frazetta are the, the man, you know. But anyway, it was great to find that. Beautiful copy, beautiful copy. I just I really like how they package that. The print's a little small in it, but there you go. And then I found these. These were five for a dollar. I'm an Andre Norton fan. You need to look her up. She's one of the great sci-fi writers. Started out in the 50s, I believe, and huge fan following. And she had a series of books come out, uh, come out uh, that took place in Witch World. I have never read these, but I've heard about them. You got, you know, Chronicles of Amber. You got uh, all kind, uh, you know, iRobot. You got the Foundation series by Asimov and stuff like that. And you know, people who have talked about this series that are into old paperbacks and old sci-fi put this right up there with them. That's a bold statement. So, in the winter months that are coming, when it's just snowing and icy outside, I'm going to have uh, something to read here. So, we'll get through these. And these aren't in order. I haven't looked up what the order they're supposed to be in, but I, I about fell down when I saw all these old. Prints. I love old paperbacks, even if it's just for the cover art. So anyway, we got three against Witch World, Year of the Unicorn. I had to look inside one of the books to make see if this is one of them. But let me just look. I just love that old, those old covers like that. Okay, it's a pretty thick one. Web of Witch World. Uh. You know, Witch World, apparently that's the first one. Warlock of Witch World. And for some reason I love that title. Warlocks and Witches. And Lore of the Witch World. And, um, you know, they're called Witch World, so I'm assuming there's magic or something in them. And uh, if I've started to notice some things in the big pictures and things. That it seems like since Lords of Salem came out, uh, that uh, Rob Zombie movie, uh which you know, I still need to pick that up. Uh, I've started noticing that, you know, witches are starting to become kind of abundant. There's a Lifetime series now where uh, they have witches on there and uh, something else has popped up of witches. And, oh my God, they're popping up in Sleepy Hollow on that Fox show and stuff. So, you know, it seems like we've gone from vampires to zombies to could the tide be turning to witches now? Because I find witches freaking disgusting if you know what witches really are. And that's why I like Lords of Salem, because that's witches. The TV show Supernatural started touching on how they do their spells with body fluids and all this stuff. They're really just freaking nasty and hygienic, toothless, you know. You know, we need to just burn them all like they do in Monty Python and the, you know, Holy Grail, you know. Anyway, moving on. And then I got these for 35 cents a piece at the Goodwill. Just some cassettes. Sting. Uh, nothing like the sun. This has, uh... Englishman in New York, which I found to be a fascinating song when it came out. 
you know, the video helped out, man. It was an English gentleman walking around the mean streets of New York. And I need to go back and watch that. Um, one of my favorite albums from the 80s, I'm not ashamed of it, NXS Kicks. Yes, the big punk metal guy likes a little bit six. Also, come on, let's check that out. Let's see if I can do this. There you are. Right, get that glare off there. I'm trying to line up my face with Mike Hutchins. There we go. There you go. Yeah, Howler Mouse meets Michael Hutchins. If I had hair, it'd probably be better. All right, old school hip hop. Young MC. You know, Stone Cold Rhyming. This has a Busta Move on it, and that's you know. We get, when you when you start getting into your forward forties, you start being real forgiving of the older music you wouldn't listen to. And then, of course, we got the Pretenders, you know, learning to uh, crawl. This is the one Scott Middle of the Road and Back on the Chain Gang, and, you know, you got to love Chrissy Hine. I had this on CD, but it doesn't matter. It's uh, Harvest Moon, uh, Neil Young. I think it's some kind of reissue they did in the early 90s. So, I don't like Journey, but I like Steve Perry, and this is uh, Street Talk. It's got old Sherry on it. Another song or two I like on that somewhere. And then I had to get this one, man. This has Come to My Window. And I'm the Only One by uh, Melissa Etheridge. Yes, I am. Great album. She's kind of like the female Bruce Springsteen. Well, she tries to be the female Bruce Springsteen. You know. All right, see. What do we got here? Where am I? Where am I? Okay, so over the weekend, I went to Abingdon, Virginia. And they still had a sale going on. 75% off of trades and hardbacks you know selected the titles and stuff and I picked up a few things picked up a few things and I got this for eight bucks this was 75 percent off it is hardback uh, I think this is from 2007 edition of the comic book price guide hardback uh, number 37 and I you know for me that's that's treating myself I have an older one and I just can't wrap my head around collecting one every year because you know a majority of what they put in here doesn't change. If you want to look back and see how many issues were in a title or see when a title came out, you know, that kind of thing, and what some key books are, that doesn't really change. They update them year to year. I'm sure that's good for value, don't get me wrong, but, you know, as soon as they're printed, the values have changed already. They fluctuate throughout the year. But, I mean, it's a great resource. I'm not going to put down saying people should not get an official Overstreet comic book price guide. Everybody should have at least have one. But I think once every five years, once every ten years is good enough. But nobody asked me. But that was eight bucks brand new. I mean, basically, it's, it's, I guess it's been sitting there since 2007. And the spine hasn't been touched. And when I opened it, it actually cracked. So, you know, nobody's even flipped through it. And I picked these things up. Uh, I had to get them. Another Day by Harvey P. Carr. Harvey P. Carr, around the time American Splendor came out. His, the movie about him, which everybody should watch, even if you're not a comic book fan, because it's just a great movie. Uh, Harvey P. Carter was friends with Robert Crumb because they both liked to listen to old jazz records and blues records in the 60s and stuff when uh, Crumb moved to Cleveland for a little while to work for Hallmark. Um, Harvey P. Carr got a little bit older, and he's from Cleveland, and he figured out that there's a drama in real life, so he started his underground book, and Robert Crumb being his buddy helped get him going. Flash forward, I don't know, almost, gosh, 30, 40 years, I don't know. I'm not going to say anything. But, um, you know, at least 30 years sooner, you know, he gets picked up by Vertigo and he does two four issue miniseries and they have all these artists come on there. This is Another Day, which is really good. And then it came out with another four issue miniseries, Another Dollar. You know, so these are just great independent books that got published in, uh, um, by, uh, vertigo which was great so he can get a little bit more scratch there and you know a lot of this stuff is supposedly his real life and i'm sure he adds a little bit of you know drama and a bit more structure to it but it's by different artists using different styles and one of these have a has a corbin story in it richard corbin came in uh you know if, if you listen to me talk about heavy metal or listen to constant bromstar uh bromstar is more of the corbin fan than i am but uh i love corbin I thought that was really cool. Let's see if I can find it. Since we're all just sitting here. 
But, I mean, he even tells the story of trying to fix a uh, toilet because, you know, he's impaired. But uh, just to give you an idea of some of the styles, you know, you get in there. He used to use a bunch of underground artists, and they pulled a few underground artists in here. But uh, lots of different styles, lots of different little short stories. And it's just something quirky and good to read. Um, I wonder where the Corbin stuff is. Anyway, just take my, oh, there it is. Just take my word on it. It's really good stuff. But here's a little Richard Corbin drawing some Harvey Picar. Which I think the meeting of those two, those two finally getting together on something in the big picture of comics and indie stuff and underground and for them both to, you know, be, you know, older and probably in their golden years to finally get together and do something. It's just really cool for me. And then I've already, I've already talked to somebody, but I picked these up because I picked up a couple months ago, I picked up a great big huge lot of Amazing Spider-Man and I put them on eBay and I got... Uh, I'm not going to say who it is because he can pop it up in his uh, video, but uh, he kind of wrote me and wished he had known about them. So when I saw these, I put all, put back a whole bunch of stuff I was going to get just so that we could work out a deal because he really wanted them. And I've talked to him and he said he's going to buy these and stuff, but I picked up uh, about 45 issues, give or take a couple, I don't, I don't remember what the exact number is, of Amazing Spider-Man. Can you see the cover? Anyway, but it starts at 540 with the black and back in black issues and it's assorted of issues all the way up to 646 So, you know, I got those for him and you know the way it is now He's buying these off me and he may pop up in the videos. So keep your eyes out, you know, if he decides to put them in there So yeah, good, got a pretty good deal on those and uh, you know, that's it uh, just a few pickups. Uh, I'm kind of scaling back on actually getting newer comics and uh, buying a whole lot of things. I'm kind of trying to start uh, filling up holes that I've had for years. <clears throat> like I need, like the Preacher uh, trade paperbacks from um, Vertigo, the Great Garthena series and stuff. I've been missing three trades forever. I've read all of them. I've had issue number one three or four times. You know, it's kind of, it's time to fill those gaps up. And then I went back there and looked at my Invisibles, and I've had the first three trades forever. And I really like to know, you know, read all those as a whole and get down in there. And then The Boys, you know, The Boys by Garth Ennis again is over. I was collecting that series by the issues, and it's just a more, I just like reading those in trade. And it's time to get the rest of those. I got a buttload. But uh, I think I fell off. The last trade that had issue like 45 in it, that's kind of where I stopped. I think it's 44, 45, I don't know, I kind of stopped. And that book uh, has ended and stuff, and it's time to uh, fill those gaps in. And then there's some back issues here and there I'm going to work on getting. So, you know, I don't know if there'll be a lot of haul videos and stuff coming up. But um, I think in November there probably will, and I'm sure Black Friday's coming up. I'll probably have a DVD haul on that one. And with that, I'm working on a um, Swamp Thing review, uh, The Anatomy Lesson, uh, number 21. And I'm going to have to talk about issue 20, the first two Alan Moore issues. I really want to get in depth in those, so if I can't sleep, I may do that tonight. Anyway, thanks for hanging in there, guys. Catch you later.